Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo. Today is a super cool episode. I traveled a couple hours south to hang out for the day uh, with Ian at the Auto Fiber headquarters. So that's what this episode is. We sat down, we spent an incredible, like literally the whole day. It was the fastest day that's ever gone by. We talked about future innovations that Ian's working on, inventions that he's working on, toured the warehouse again, the whole front office facility and everything. Uh, It was a very, very cool day. And then towards the end of the day, we sat down and recorded this podcast episode. It goes over an hour, super, super good and engaging. Uh, kind of get you into the mind frame of Ian and how he runs Autofiber. Um, talk about the Tell of the Month Club, all all the goodies. So this is a super, super cool episode. Uh, and this episode is brought to you by House Call Pro, where you could get a free demo, see all the features of their platform, their app. It's an app for m- mobile businesses, helps you run your business. It's a CRM. It's an amazing thing. Tons of features that I would do a great disservice talking about. So if you go to housecallpro.com slash ADP, that's housecallpro.com slash ADP, um, you're actually going to be able to get a free demo. You'll jump on a call with them over an hour long if you choose that amount of time. Um, and they'll go through all the features. And trust me, you will be blown away. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the Ian. Let's get into the Ian. Let's get, no, maybe, let's get into this episode with Ian from Auto Fiber. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. This will be in the 380 range. I don't know, somewhere wow. around there. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, live in, are we in Ote? Otai. Otai. Otai Mesa. Otai Mesa. So yeah. San Diego. How about that? Much yeah. easier. San Diego. Yeah. And if you recognize that voice, that's Ian. We're sitting in the Auto Fiber uh showroom and this place is amazing so welcome back to the the podcast yeah thanks yeah. man it's been a while it's been a long while so over I, a year at least huh because yeah. i think the last time you were on it was just about like an overview of auto fiber right and we yeah. kind of got into microfiber a little bit but not yep. not too deep but but uh this place is insane do you have visitors come by yeah we do have visitors we try to when visitors come we try to get them to make an appointment because we're really not like a retail store. Um, so sometimes we'll have customers show up and, you know, if they want a certain towel, you mm. know, we have to send our warehouse guys with a forklift out to pull down a pallet. Yeah. This isn't like boxes. a garage operation. No, by the no. way, this is, this is a huge shop. Yeah. We've got 20,000 square feet, over a million pieces of microfiber. Wow. Um, so, I mean, we've got, probably 600 plus pallets of it's insane yeah yeah. it's really like a microfiber paradise <laughs> I, I swear like i know to you it's normal in the back but like just walking through the warehouse you're just like wow yeah. this is a lot of microfiber yeah when we were smaller we used to um uh, customers would come in and we'd walk them through the warehouse and just pull out samples mm-hmm. and show them this and that and it just got too overwhelming. We were ripping open boxes, yeah. and the place just turned into a disaster. <laughs> so now we have uh, like our front area where we have all the towels out on display, and customers can come up and feel them and touch them. Um, but yeah, so it's I awesome. mean, we don't just sell automotive stuff. We sell into okay. all different types of industries, sports like mm-hmm. golf towels. We sell. Um, I think the best drying towel for like your body is. Uh, is a waffle weave towel yeah i mean some people like that i'm not even, my dad <laughs> loves um wa- uh, drying himself with microfiber <laughs> okay but the the knock on microfiber for your body is that it it's too grippy right so it like, is very grippy yeah yeah so but some, that's what i like about it is it gets you dry yeah yeah some people really liked it but for me like when i get out of the shower i like to like you know the the picture of the guy yeah. like wrapping the towel yeah. around himself and shaking the towel like back and forth. Okay. That's how I dry myself out of the shower, <laughs> putting the towel between my legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one foot up on the toilet <laughs> <Yeah>. seat. <laughs> but There's so a name for that, I there, can't what it's called. So for me, I don't like to dry my body with microfiber because okay. it's too grippy. But lots of people love it, or like uh, they're great for camping mm. um, or for 
RVs, mm-hmm. lots of people who travel around the country. There's, I mean, the RV yeah, communities, communities huge, huge yeah. and they love microfiber mm-hmm. um, because it stores so compact, right. right? So you can have like a really thin towel mm-hmm. that folds up super small. Right. Same thing like for camping, um, big, big things. So like actually, uh, lots of camping people just use giant suede towels, right? Like mm. the type of towel guys yeah, yeah. are using for applying ceramic yeah, coatings, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 You just have a giant suede towel, and that towel mm. um, is your, like, camping drying towel. And you can just hang it out, and it dries right. super fast. Super fast. Um, we saw a lot of mm. mops, so into the hospital um, and to janitorial companies. So, um, But microfiber for detailing yeah. were – the innovations happening. Yep. Um, yep. And that's part of the reason why we're doing this in person is obviously a podcast, but you had some products you wanted to show me and some, some things. And that's, I, I know I say that repeatedly. Like I love the innovation that, that you offer and that auto fiber does. And one of the main innovations is the, the towel of the month club. Yeah. Right? So that's one yep. thing that people are, it's so funny. People are hitting me up like, dude, your Jimbo code worked on the, the towel of the month club. Like yeah. that's amazing. And cause it's so inexpensive and to, to sample well the towel of the month if you haven't heard it's one towel a month for, yep. for a whole year yeah you know and so it's it's but no one's done that yet that was like the first iteration of a towel of the month club i guess right yeah well yeah i haven't seen that i've been planning it for a while um so and it took me a while to figure out the technology like behind the scenes right. to make it so that we're not like having to manually create an order for right. all these customers <laughs> every month. Right. Um, so I finally found the software that plugs into our other backend software, mm. got it all figured out and configured. I really wanted to start it at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. in January, but it took a while to figure it out. Um, but yes, yeah, so the, ta- the idea with the towel of the month club is to get samples of the towels into our customers' hands. Right so that you can feel and test the towels. Because like um, we talked about before we started recording, it's like what different we're, detailers are weird about colors and textures and types. And some people like this towel, some people like that towel, plush, not plush, yeah. waffle weave, diamond weave, silk, whatever. Yes. Like there's so many options that it really becomes kind of a hurdle to what towels to select, yep. right? And then a lot of towels come in a pack. Yep. So it's like, well, you're kind of risking five towels that – yeah you may or may not like yep you know it's a great way to sample stuff yeah and it's i mean it's impossible to tell how good a towel is from a picture from a picture or a description on the internet right so i mean we can have five towels that look exactly the same and Mm -hmm. even feel the same right with the same specs and they're going to work differently yep um and so and different customers have different expectations Mm -hmm. right um they work on different surfaces they use different chemicals right Right. because some chemicals react differently with different towels um and there's there's just so many variables that sampling is huge and we actually send out like for bigger wholesale customers Mm -hmm. if i'm trying to get a bigger customer Mm -hmm. and develop a towel program for them we're always sending out towel samples Mm -hmm. um because I feel like it's always better for the customer to decide, you know, how the towel is going to work mm-hmm. for their process. Yeah. So the idea with the towel of the month is to get the towel samples in your hand to test and evaluate yourself and to compare them, you know, mm-hmm. against other towels that you use. And then you can make the decision. So I don't expect every customer to like every towel. Right. But it's not a huge uh, investment for the client to join the Tell of the Month Club. Either. No, you know, no, it's, it's not. not. Well, so I had an introductory price right. of twelve dollars a month for the first month, and now it's twelve dollars tw- a year. Twelve dollars a year, right? Correct. Yeah, <laughs> not a month. Me. It should be a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and we got a lot of signups. All those people are super stoked, but um, we raised the price to twenty four dollars okay. so a year. A whopping. Two yeah, bucks a month. Two bucks a month. <laughs> so, and I've had lots of people ask, like, how do you do it? Like, are you crazy? Like, right. that was a lot of people said. And um, so the idea isn't, isn't just for the customers. Some people will, obviously, just sign up for it and right. get samples and be stoked that they got towels for a dollar or two dollars right. or whatever. But the idea. And these aren't like secondhand. They're 
No, these are first like, size. This, yeah. So that I've had other people message like because you, you say sample and it, it makes you think you're getting a a smaller size. Some people or think they're just getting a swatch or a whatever. swatch or yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. This is actually a full size usable. Yeah, yeah towel. this is a real towel. And so the <laughs> idea is, it's definitely um, a money loser for us. Right, sure. we're just going to spend yeah. more on shipping the towels. Right. Out. Well, that's what my first thought was. Like I had a buddy sign up and. He's like, dude, your offer code work. I saved like a couple bucks. I'm like, how the freak can you save a couple bucks on 12 bucks for the whole year? Like it, it's got, and I was racking my brain of like shipping alone is costing more than yeah. the towel, ta- like let alone the cost of the towel itself. But yeah, yeah it probably costs a- like two to $3 per package to ship <clears throat> out per month. But for me, I think it's worth it to get the products in your hand. Right. And we believe in our products so much and yep. our quality that, um, I'm hoping that at least 50% right. of the people are going to come back and buy more towels. Sure. And a lot of the um, customers are going to be professional detailers who have shops who are right. buying hundreds and even right. thousands of towels right. a year. Right. Yeah. So right. from that perspective, from a marketing standpoint, like I could go out and spend that much money on Facebook 100%. ads like, and spend that in a week, yep. right? What I'm going to spend on shipping yep. these towel samples yep. out to customers. Yep. But it, it's a great parallel to detailers, right? And offering freebie services or sample services, especially when detailers start talking about like, well, how do I get more paint correction jobs? Or how do I get more customers? Or, you know, how do I how do I start getting customers in the door? You start with those lost leaders, Absolutely, right? You start yeah. with doing a, a free one-step paint correction or a hood or a fender or a free rim coating or a free wash or whatever. You start with a non, uh, you start with a, an offer, an irresistible offer, yeah. right? That just gets people in the door so you can collect their information or you can collect their, you know, y- you're getting their, your product in their hands, yep. right? So it, on the onset, it looks like it's a loss leader, but really it's a revenue generator because it's a customer generator. Exactly. And what it is, it, there's the lifetime value the of lifetime a customer. value of a right? customer. So to me, that is the big thing. You can lose money up yep. front yep. if you're going to get a certain percentage of customers yep. who I mean who knows from this club right. I could end up one detailer who's got five shops or something yep. right could end up buying tens of thousands of dollars yep. worth of towels yep um, yep so uh, I mean from that standpoint I don't know I think it's the, it's a test yeah. right yeah yeah uh, and we will see how it ends up going um but, but so i far think it's phenomenal yeah well we had a lot of signups <laughs> yeah. way more signups good. than i expected good um like orders of magnitude more good um awesome uh, and if people want to join i'll link up in the description below if they want a, a link to go sign up for the towel of the month a whopping two bucks i mean it's still not yeah gonna break the bank and it's a i think it's just an awesome way to because I've already gotten towels that I didn't know you had. Yeah. You know, yep. I think the first month I was like, I think it was the Royal Plush or something. Yeah. That I, I Maybe I kind of knew about it, but I was like, wow, this is an awesome towel. Yeah. That I would have never awesome picked towel. out. A, yeah. I would have never picked out of the stack. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's an, another part of the problem. We have so many different versions of mm-hmm. towels. Um, you know, lots of customers get stuck into the couple towels right. that they're using and they don't know all the differences. So the the other part of this, of the towel of the month club is it's gonna be an opportunity to educate customers mm-hmm. on the towels, right? So for example, if I'm trying to create a video or an article or some content about a towel, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's hard to explain a towel to somebody if they're not touching and right. feeling it, right? right? So the idea with the towel of the month is uh, not only to um, get the towel in your hand to test it and feel it and use it, but also to send you information about the mm-hmm. towel, how it's used, how cust- other customers use it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it's a way t- for you to compare the towel. So like what I said before, um, lots of customers aren't going to like every towel that we send. They're right. going to like another one. But, you know, if you f- get 12 different towels and you like, you know, eight of them and mm-hmm. four of them you don't like, mm-hmm. it's going to solidify your love for the other towels right. that you're getting, right? Because right? now you're comparing them. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the idea. Um, and I think it's going to be good. I think, um, you know, at some point I might expand the program into, mm. like, selling 
you know, sending out a sample of micro restore or yeah. something, or that even might be part of it. Maybe one, mm -hmm. maybe at the end of the year or something, I'll send out mm -hmm. a sample of micro restore. Um, or even other detailing products. Like I have talked to Billy, mm -hmm. like it could be a great opportunity to send out little four ounce samples of wipeout 100%. or F ball yeah. or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, or even like the saver applicators. Um, Those are amazing, by the way. It's yeah, like they're amazing, right? So the only thing about this um, is, you know, there might be some, you know, customers in the group that aren't, you know, ceramic coating sure. installers. Yeah. Um, so they might be upset if they get a maybe as applicator. An bonus. Maybe yeah. maybe there'll be bonuses. Maybe yeah. <laughs> Better join. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only way to know, right? But yeah, that's the thing, right? So like with the saver applicators, mm -hmm. a lot of customers don't know or don't understand right. the benefit or the difference. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get them into people's hands and people yep. testing them, you know, they're like, wow, this mm -hmm. makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in, uh, in my job. Right? Yeah, and well, and that's, I mean, we touched on it in innovation, I think is like a main pillar of, of your company right so yeah even the, even down to the saver applicator right it's like you had you want to talk about how you have a what's on the back side of the applicator so it's not on the onset it looks like just a normal foam block applicator yeah right like uh, kind of a generic thing but it's actually what's on the back side of the applicator that is innovative exactly right so the thing is so we've been selling these foam covered microfiber sponges for man like 15 years mm -hmm. um, did you actually develop it initially? yeah yeah okay. yeah we did well we helped develop it for another customer Got of it. ours um because wholesaling and and is a whole and private labeling i guess is yeah kind of where it all originated exactly and you still do we could get exactly. into it later that's if you the want. main part of our business got it um so we've been and this was long before ceramic coatings yeah, yeah, yeah. were ever around um, so really they were used mostly as wax mm -hmm. applicators, right? For like paste wax or all those butter waxes yep. or all these different um, products. Um, but then when ceramic coatings came along, um, customers were just getting the, the little blocks from the ceramic coating companies and wrapping the suede right, microfiber which is over it. Horrible. Yeah, and so customers complained about that and then they started using our um, microfiber foam applicators mm -hmm. but they're always complaining about you know all the product that's being wasted because it's basically seeping through the microfiber s seeping through the foam exactly and just completely going to waste exactly and when you're you know those bottles of the ceramic yeah, coating not cheap no not a, not cheap at all right. and they're tiny little bottles so if you're losing all this product right. into the foam yeah like it's just it doesn't work out right um so it, it took a while to figure this out um you know, testing different versions. At one point, we I had tested um, foam that doesn't absorb. Whoa! Right. So there's certain foams that don't absorb. Um, Is it super hard? It's then it's too hard. Okay. Yeah. That that's the problem. Why that didn't work. Got it. Um, but then finally, um, I found uh, it's almost like a Tyvek type material. Okay. It's like a polyester, I, um, like polyurethane type. Okay. Uh, plastic coating that's just glued onto the mm. back side of the microfiber before the microfiber sewn around the sponge um jeez so it just limits the Seepage. pretty much <laughs> yeah pretty much prevents the coating from soaking through right so the coating you know only is absorbed by the microfiber right. layer uh, does so that the, also help with like uh distribution of product on the panel yeah so that was the that's the best thing about this product is so lots of times new products and new ideas they just fail right sure. off the bat you're right. trying to solve a problem and it just doesn't solve the problem which is so frustrating because there's so much lead time in like the development yeah. of the product getting the sample and like yeah. literally within 10 seconds so you nine out of fails. ten of the little things that i come up with or problems trying to solve mm -hmm. they fail and you have to solve it another way but, um, but with this product i was trying to you know uh, fix the complaint the customers were having about losing their products. So I was trying to save, you know, mm -hmm. uh, help coding installers, you know, save money. Right. 
by using an applicator that doesn't mm. steal all the coding. <laughs> but the real, that's not even the best benefit of the product. The benefit after guys have started using it is that it applies the coding more evenly. Mm. And that's because um, the product doesn't gum up in the pad like mm -hmm. it does with the other pad. So I think what happens is, you know, you on a normal applicator pad, you start applying the coding into the, um, into the pad, it starts to seep into the foam, and then it starts to cure inside the foam because all the oh. coating isn't getting onto the surface right. of, the, um, of the paint. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add more coating on top of that to apply more to the surface, and it starts, the curing process starts sooner, right? Because there's a chain reaction right. between the molecules, right? So when you, whenever you add like um, a product that has to cure to something else that's already curing, the chain reaction happens right. faster. Right. At least that's my theory. I don't know if there's a, there might be a chemist out there that can explain it better. But, you know, based on testing, um, what people have told me is that the, it just doesn't gum up in the pad mm -hmm. as fast. So the pad lasts longer, mm -hmm. but then it also makes the pad, um, you know, it just makes the coating uh, apply more even, mm -hmm. so it's easier to level. Um, so that really is, that's the main benefit of the product. Mm. It's, I, I just love the innovation. Yeah. And that's why I love coming down here too. Well, the innovation comes from talking to real detailers. Mm. I'm not a real detailer, right? Even though I probably... You could do it. I yeah, I can do it. I do do it, <laughs> right. right? But I'm not a professional detailer. Sure. I, don't, I don't have a detailing business. Right. You know, but I I do do detailing and I test a lot of products. Uh, you know, I do all the work and I go and visit detailers mm -hmm. and I have conversations mm -hmm. like I'm ha having with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So And because you private label and have distributors, you have a wider net of people that you can talk to as exactly. well, Exactly. Right? So, so I see it as an actual it's an advantage it's for probably me. better than being it's, a detailer it's better talk to so many detailers. and i don't have this preconceived notion mm -hmm. of i'm not stuck into yep. a process or a trend yep. or a certain type of chemical right so it so helps with the innovation it helps to be more innovative mm. so it uh, and i look at it from this perspective so um in college i studied a thing called cognitive science which mm -hmm. is like it's a interdisciplinary um, it's a psychology, computer science, and neuroscience interdisciplinary thing. And so sounds like something I would never understand. Yeah. So what, <laughs> well, what I was trying to, what I thought I wanted to do was like, um, d develop software, oh, um, okay. or, uh, um, like web design. So what I was studying was, um, like user interface design, okay. how to design computer uh, software for user interface. Interesting. And the way that the uh, they trained us um, to to do this um, was you you know when a software when a uh, programmer is designing a software, they will design all types of bugs into the software just because they have a certain biases and they mm. have certain ways of thinking, right? But in order to actually design software correctly, you have to test it with hundreds of different people, mm -hmm. right? So they taught us these processes of designing software. You would build a software interface and then you would test it with multiple different people and you would watch like where they're clicking and what they're doing right. and what process they take, right? Mm. So like with the microfiber products and designing these tools, I feel like I'm kind of taking that process yep. and, and applying it to this industry, right? So mm -hmm. what I try to do is you know, make prototypes and samples and send them out to detailers. And I try to get, you know, uh, unbiased mm -hmm. uh, accounts. Right. Um, and that's why lots of times uh, the feedback I want, I'm looking for negative feedback right. all the time because that's what drives it into the problem solving. Lots of, lots of companies don't like it when they get negative mm -hmm. feedback on their products. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've t flipped it. My, the way my mind works and I'm looking for any type of negative feedback. So right. whenever a customer has a problem or something's going wrong, I want to talk to that customer and mm -hmm. dive into why 
they have that problem because sometimes there's a idea there that I can right. take and turn into a product that's going to solve problems for other people. Because mm-hmm. um, you're going into it thinking that it's not perfect. Yeah. There's well, are, do you know there's a problem? You just don't know what the problem is. Exactly. Exactly. And right. if, if if you don't know what the problem right. is, you, How do you, ca- fix it? you can't solve it. Right. Mm-hmm. But there's all these problems out there there's uh, and when it comes to detailing um it really is the perfect industry to try to test this stuff because there's infinite processes there's all these different chemicals Mm -hmm. there's a lot of innovation happening so the industry is changing all the time um there's all these various viewpoints Mm -hmm. there's detailers who are just like just starting out high school kids who are just like you know cleaning cars to guys that are working on multi-million dollar Mm -hmm. supercars right so there's huge range of Mm -hmm. variation um and there's just all these opportunities of all these little niches of ways that you can solve problems Mm -hmm. um so i'm not really all that and most of the microfiber suppliers and companies they just go um and find you know they have a factory or a new you know, uh, material comes out and they'll just, you know, buy whatever stock um, Mm -hmm. and start selling a product. Uh, You know, I'm not super interested in that. Mm -hmm. I want to take, I feel like I'm a conduit between the detailers and the, uh, the factories Mm -hmm. in Korea and Mm -hmm. China. So, um, you know, the way I look at it is I'm, distilling the information from right. the detailers right, yep. and turning it into something. And then mm-hmm. I'm taking it back to the factory mm-hmm. and training the factory on how to make the product that's going to fill it. these needs, right? Because these factories, they're just making... They just make stuff. They're just textile right. factories, right? right? Um, yeah, they're just like... Uh, um, you know, they just have like machines or whatever that are weaving the fabric, right. right? But they're and they're buying the yarn from another factory, right? But sometimes the yarn isn't the best yarn for a detailer, right? Mm. But it's going to be fine for a janitor, who's right? Wiping off surfaces, right, right. right. Um, so th- the way that the the whole detailing industry has progressed and the microfiber mm-hmm. portion of the industry it's becoming a lot more specialized mm. um, so it al- almost seems like the innovator is more important than where it's getting made absolutely because it really doesn't matter i mean it's like you can get it you can get a shirt made a hundred different places yep right but it's the style of the shirt the fit of the shirt the the branding behind the shirt that how it's positioned in the marketplace yes you know we had those i don't know why i picked shirts but it's like we had the tall shirts for a while and then the shirts the bottoms cut differently or or the they're thin and not thick and kind of we had like i think it was american apparel and dave or dove charney who was the guy the innovator behind like the basic the basics of, of clothing right yeah doesn't he happen to make it in LA or whatever, but it really didn't matter where it was being made. It was the innovation that Dove brought to the industry that kind of changed the basics industry. Yeah. Right? Well, I think um, the fashion industry is a interesting, like kind of corollary, right? Because fashion is changing right. all the time. Mm-hmm. So they have to come up with a new idea right. and they just change things for like aesthetic reasons right right? no one cares where quicksilver is making their shirts yeah it's that they're buying it because it's quicksilver not because of where it got made yes absolutely so um you know with auto fiber and our company we source from multiple different factories Mm -hmm. um in china and korea and i'm always open to work with new factories too i actually test out different factories all the time are there different factories like i one of the main questions that always comes up is why is there not a u.s based like manufacturer of microfiber towels yeah well so there's never been microfiber's never been made in the u.s um the textile industry in the u.s died like 15 to 20 years ago um so and at that time microfiber was only made in uh japan really 
Um, so originally it was made in Japan. I think there was like some Swedish companies that okay. were actually making it. This is actually this is probably more like 30 years ago now. Um, so by the time manufacturing in America was disappearing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the textile industry in Asia was really ramping up. Mm. Um, so when I first started into the microfiber business, we didn't buy from China at all. It was only made in South Korea. Um, mm. And the factory that we started using, they did everything under one roof. They were completely vertically integrated. So they, um, they uh, spun the yarn, they wove the, and knit the towels. They had a dye house where they would dye and split the material. They had the cut and sew operation. They did everything. Um, hmm. But the towels were like, you know, they would, they were like normal 16 by 16 towels were like, would retail for like 20 bucks or whatever. Wow. Um, and the wholesale was like five bucks or something crazy. Um, but then, you know, when China manufacturing started ramping up, uh, the Korean factories would start to send over the material to China. So they would, you know, spin the yarn, weave the material. They'd send over just the fabric over to mm. China where it was cut and sewn. And then, you know, over time, you know, the Chinese started buying the machines for weaving the material, right? And then the yarn would, you know, then they started having yarn manufacturers there. Um, so now all of the, there's pretty much no factories that do every part of the process. Because it's just right? extremely inefficient. Y yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Got it. You know, for the it same factory. costs exactly. so much. And, and that's just when, when industries develop, right. they start to fractionate into all these different parts. It's right? like what we're seeing in the detailing industry. We're, we're having the, we talked about this earlier yep. too. It's like you have the ceramic coating only guys. You got the car washers you got the maintenance detailers it's yes. it's segmenting yes you know exactly and so that's what with the manufacturing of microfiber so mm -hmm. it's kind of funny when i hear people say oh do you make your own towels and it's like well no we don't own the factory right but nobody owns the factory there's no factory that's doing it it's like when a pencil is made right there's right. the there's the wood and there's the carbon mm -hmm. and then there's the eraser and mm -hmm. there's the metal part all those parts are made by separate separate you know companies mm -hmm. you know the company that's cutting down the tree for the right for the pencil right is nowhere near right right um but yeah, and it is interesting, you know, how the detailing industry mm -hmm. is changing. Um, and that's one reason why there's so many different types of towels, right? Mm -hmm. So a mobile guy is going to need a total different arsenal of, mm -hmm. of microfiber products than the ceramic mm -hmm. coating guy. Mm -hmm. And then even with ceramic coatings, um, different coatings act differently with mm -hmm. different applicators and towels and so is it really even important the origin of a towel it, it, this this big debate that i think is subsiding a little bit but you know korean versus chinese made first of all i find it incredibly difficult to even prove where a towel is originating from and yeah. not just shipping from yep right is there a way like can you tell can you pick up a towel and be like oh this is south korean fiber or this is chinese fiber can even tell the overarching question does it even freaking matter no okay it doesn't matter i mean there's good factories in korea and there's good factories in china there's good bad factories in both countries mm -hmm. um i think maybe if you took like an average or whatever mm -hmm. like the average korean factory like maybe you take 10 factories in korea and 10 in china right you know more of them are going to be better in korea okay i think and part of it is they're more developed in, tor in terms of um, uh, the technology. They've been doing it longer. Okay. Um, and what happened to Japan? How did they drop off the map? Like they're just they, they're too expensive. Too expensive, right? So originally it was made in Japan, but the problem is Japan. Uh, they're just a way more developed economy, right? Got and it. So twenty years ago, Korea was what China is now. Right. So mm. South Korea was, I mean, big into textiles and they were doing all types of manufacturing. But now, um, you know, textiles just aren't uh, 
big enough profit center, right? right? So Korea is super big into all types of tech. Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, isn't Samsung a Korean? So. Yeah, lots of mm -hmm. the tech companies and TV companies and stuff mm -hmm. um, are South Korean. But, I mean, they uh, – and, you know, labor costs more mm -hmm. in South Korea, right? Got it. So, okay. you know, you're not going to be, you know, selling – buying towels for a dollar from mm -hmm. south korea right but no it, it it really doesn't matter um you know some of the factories i use you know not so much for the auto fiber stuff um more for like the general purpose towels um you know the quality is just not as good mm -hmm. um and it's not going to be paint safe towels but those towels are good for like household cleaning mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. Um, but we, th our main factory in China, you know, I put them on par with any factory mm -hmm. in the world. Um, and we've been working with them for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So we have a, um, really strong relationship in terms of prototyping mm. products, right? Mm -hmm. Um, most factories aren't going to make all these nifty little things mm -hmm. that we're doing like, um, I even with the factory I use now, I tried to make these safer applicators mm -hmm. five years ago and they couldn't source the materials mm. to make the um, plastic barrier layer. Mm. But when you work on these things for years and years and years, mm -hmm. right, you know, it, uh, the factories become more developed mm. um, and they add new equipment and new machines. Um, mm. So, for example, like with the bags we've been making, mm -hmm. you know, we... Uh, Which are freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah. Way. So, we've got all these different bags. Yep. And the idea with the bags originally was just to have nice bags that we could do custom printing on mm -hmm. for detailers. Um, uh, but we, we've we been doing so many of these bags now, um, the factory had to go out and they've had to buy new <laughs> machines, right? Oh, to, wow. To, um, to sew them and bring down the cost and make it, it more efficient and because the bags that have developed from like these like three bottle holder bags to the yeah. full what is, is it a 32 gallon yeah the baffle bag? yeah the, the one the, yeah the towel sa yeah. separator one exactly which is amazing uh, how's the reception been on that because the People, last time i was here you showed me speaking of innovation you showed me the normal the smaller bag yeah yeah the for the buckets for the buckets yeah the yeah. bucket that's right and that had that was just in kind of like an idea phase still right it yeah. wasn't ha it yeah. hadn't fully developed yeah and then we kind of thought about the 32 gallon one and so yep. now to see it like out in the wild it's it's cool but i haven't asked how it's been received no it is good um so that th i mean that's not a product where i think we're gonna sell like boatloads of it it's very niche mm -hmm. type product mm -hmm. but i think it definitely solves a problem mm. um and we've sold way more you know than i expected us mm -hmm. to sell especially you know for it being kind of the off season for right the detailing mm -hmm. market and for people that can't see it goes into like a big trash bin and it has dividers and separators for towels yeah so it's like ideal for a shop detailing yeah, operation exactly. right that can want to separate their towels and then what i love about what you thought about just the idea in general is it's a good transportation tool for your microfibers yeah to, to get them to the laundry room yeah right exactly so here um with the bags, the you know, there's a problem that detailers have is how are you sorting and storing your towels, right? Because right? really, a lot of contamination can come through just waiting to wash them, right? Yeah, not just waiting to wash them, but even just sitting around mm -hmm. in the open, right? Mm -hmm. Like towels can collect dust mm -hmm. and dirt and stuff just from the atmosphere, right? Um, so. Uh, and then when you are washing, you know, if you're washing your wheel towels with paint towels or glass towels, right. you know, they can become contaminated. Don't um, tell them about my truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. So <laughs> sorting. And we even I even have this problem at my house. You mm -hmm. know, we've got I've got so many towels and test so many different ones <laughs> that it's it really is. Right. It's Inconvenient. a mess. Inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea with the bucket bags was um, just to make bags that you know are labeled for different types right. of towels like you mm -hmm. can put your wheel towels in one bag you put your paint towels in another bag mm -hmm. and then you they have a drawstring and you can tie it off so that um uh so that they don't you know dust and stuff doesn't mm -hmm. get or dirt doesn't get on them um 
and then they also store easier. So lots of guys, and this is what I've always done, is just throwing towels into buckets, yep. right? So, right. But having all these buckets around, and buckets are harder to carry around. They take right. up more space, right? Sometimes, you know, you have less glass towels than you have drying towels mm -hmm. or whatever. And so you've got a little bucket with a couple of glass towels in it and a full bucket of drying towels. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea with the bags was to, um, you know, just to use the bucket. So the bag fits in a normal five gallon bucket um, just so you can fit. It's almost the bucket works as an exoskeleton right. so you can fill them mm -hmm. with the towels and then you take the towels out. Mm -hmm. Right. But when I was showing you this idea, people get confused on it because they think, oh, you know, it's a laundry bag for my dirty towels. Right. right. So when we were having this right. discussion, <laughs> you were asking about throwing your towels in it. And mm -hmm. I was like, no, nah, it's not really for that. And then that's when we started talking about having a bigger version. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone has these 32 gallon right. trash yeah, cans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're ubiquitous everywhere. You right. go to Home Depot yeah, or yeah. Lowe's. Um, so the next phase on it. So and this is what's so cool about this marketplace is detailers have great freaking ideas, mm -hmm. right? And you have these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, they're always throwing out ideas. And so, you know, I come out with this this uh, towel separator for the trash can. And now the mobile guys are like, well, mm -hmm. I can't put a 32 right. gallon trash can into right. my um yeah, it doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit, <laughs> right? So I was excited when Jimbo brought down his whole rig down here. You know, I've got all these other containers that, you know, I wanted to right. ask him about. Because yeah, yeah. the next thing is, is to figure out um, the right type of container to make a new, you know, mm -hmm. dirty laundry bag mm -hmm. for mobile guys. Because mm -hmm. I think that's actually where the real need is. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is I didn't want to do it for the mobile guys until I got feedback from the marketplace right. on the larger version. Right. Um, right. And I've gotten a lot of great feedback mm -hmm. on it. Um, so that's kind of the way I see auto fiber and mm -hmm. our company, especially into the future is to be almost like a antenna, yeah. you know, and I'm picking up the signals from everyone yep. and taking ideas and what problems there are that exist mm -hmm. and, you know, using my connections with the factories mm -hmm. um, in China and Korea to develop new products. Mm -hmm. um, so the cool thing was when microfiber first came around and I, I started this business in 2001 and uh, my dad started his, my dad had a microfiber business that he started like in 96, back when I was in high school. Mm. Um, and I remember him bringing home these, you know, the miracle cloth or whatever, mm -hmm. and saying, this is gonna be revolutionary, it's amazing. And we were like, dude. <laughs> it's just a towel. Yeah, talking about, bro, you're crazy. <laughs> right, and he right, was right. like flipping out. Some people like are just towel lovers, right? right? There's some people, and mm -hmm. my dad is one of them. Um, <laughs> and he, uh, uh, you know, started a company, built up a great company. But uh, at, uh, you, back in the day, you know, in the 90s and the early mm -hmm. 2000s, uh, people didn't believe in microfiber. Right. People didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Detailers were scared. They thought oh, po polyester towels is going to mm -hmm. scratch, right? Because mm -hmm. 100%, you were never supposed to use 100% polyester mm. bath towels. They had those. You mm -hmm. were supposed to use, you know, Egyptian cotton. Mm -hmm. right? And so when guys would see on the tag that it's a polyester towel. Um, oh, they so, freak out. Yeah, people would freak out. So uh, originally selling towels, it was about selling the technology to people um, mm. and just the idea of microfiber. Where now the industry is completely different, mm -hmm. fully developed. Right. right. Microfibers, a buzzword. Everyone knows what it is. Mm -hmm. Everyone uses it. So in order to stand out in the marketplace, mm -hmm. you have to come up, you know, and solve new problems. Mm. The cool thing is, like I had said, is detailing changes so rapidly, and right. there's so much innovation in the rest of it. Um, whether it comes from ceramic coatings or other, you know, chemical mm -hmm. products. In, and all the processes that people have developed over time. Like, it's amazing how uh, all the processes that yeah. detailers have used have changed over, and it's even over the last couple of years. Yeah, I was right? going to say, and it continues to change even quicker. Yeah. You know? 
it's amazing. And, and a lot of it has to do with social media and all the yep. interaction that everyone has mm -hmm. um, because I, that's the way ideas work. Right. They just feed on each other. Totally. And everyone's out there coming up with new ways and ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what's kind of cool and exciting about Auto Fiber um, is to be able to work on all these new mm -hmm. products and to solve new problems mm -hmm. um, for people out there. And I just, I just don't see it changing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. And so I guess that kind of comes into it. So uh, one of our major things that I want to do, so we do cu custom printing on towels mm -hmm. and we have these bags. Um, uh, and one of the things I want to help detailers figure out is how to market their businesses mm -hmm. better to their customers. It's a very underserved yeah. niche within detailing. Right. And, and actually, even the opposite, they'll they'll put another brand above their own, especially in relation to ceramic coatings. Yes. They're promoting, well, I'm this certified installer. And I've always griped for a long time of like, dude, never put another brand over your brand. Yes. Like, pump your own brand. Exactly, you right? Know? So, I mean, I definitely want – to pump my brand, right? <laughs> 100%. Right? And I understand right. the coding companies, and it's, it's awesome what they're doing. And people love the brands. When you have a great company, people want to support it. Sure. Um, but the companies also need to support 100%. their customers, right. right? And so for me, um, so we've done this printing on towels for years. It's called dye sublimation printing, and it's a heat transfer of the dye into the um, – into the towels. It's but important to note it's not a it it doesn't suppress the fibers. Yeah, it, doesn't it actually just re dyes the fibers. Yes, right? it doesn't change the integrity of the towel. Like right. for example, if you were to screen print a towel, that ink is going to scratch paint. Right, and it's going to um, the towel's not going to absorb right. or clean where right. you put that on. With dye sublimation, it doesn't change the texture. It doesn't change the towel at all. Right. You can't feel it at all. It's just like another color dye. On right. It. Same thing. Like we have customers that you know, want to embroider towels and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> they you don't. don't want to embroider <laughs> and you don't want a silk screen mm -hmm. either, unless the product isn't going to be used sure. for cleaning, which then it's like, why are you right. making right. Right. <laughs> Why not right. just make it out of something else? Um, so in the last year, we used to outsource the printing. So in the last year that we've brought, um, started buying the equipment and doing the printing mm -hmm. here because I want to make a big push mm -hmm. with detailers um whether it's mobile guys mm -hmm. or you know bigger shops where we can do custom uh, products that the detailers can either leave with their customers mm. or can sell um, as another profit center mm -hmm. so like uh, with these bags the original bags we did which are these swag sacks mm -hmm. the idea is is that we're going to print you know your company logo on it mm -hmm. and then if you're um you know, if you want to leave some towels for your customer or maybe a quick detail spray, you know, you have a nice bag that you can present to the customer that has your logo and branding on it. We can also, we uh, so part of the idea, like with, I've got this, the multi-flip towel mm -hmm. and the glass flip towels. Yep. The idea with those isn't just that they're more functional, that they work like a mitt or, you know, uh, you can flip them inside out, but they're more compact, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the idea is is we can print your logo on it like a business card and you're leaving yep. this nifty little innovative mm -hmm. towel in with your customer with your branding on yep. it. It stores compact and they can your customer is going to leave it in their car. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know how many times are you in your car and you spilled your coffee yep. or you your windshield is foggy yep. or you need to wipe it off or there's a big – bird poop yep. that you need to remove yep. right so so much better than an air freshener or a or just leaving a business card or a, a throwaway it's not a throwaway item no. because it it feels substantial and like you're actually going to like you can't get yourself to throw a towel away yeah <laughs> you know exactly and especially um and just having the logo on it i think that branding yep, yep. is important you know if somebody's keeping your yeah. detail shops logo in yeah. their car and they're seeing it all the time well it's the whole reason behind like the notepad in the real estate industry right yep. it's like the notepad with the business card on the top because people are going to use the notepad to write notes absolutely right it's the same idea it's the same idea of the towel of the month club right so i go. like we're losing money on it but 
But you're not. But because, I'm not because I get to touch these. I yep. get to send something to each yep. of these customers every month. Yep. And then they, I get to send them an email that yep. they're going to read and like yep. every month. Yep. So it's like, Let alone getting a physical piece of uh, mail, yeah. you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, uh, I think that touching of the customer mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. is huge. And I want uh, more detail shops to do this. Yep. So we also have, I was just showing Jimbo this other bag I made just a small little version that we're about to um, put up on the website. It's like a six by six mm -hmm. bag. So um, I know that a lot of detailers and I've had detailers do this to me, um, like lots of customers have just loose change mm -hmm. or pins or whatever, whatever they have laying around in their center console. And, you know, guys will put it all together in a bag, like mm -hmm. plastic bag or something. But the idea with a small little bag, it's almost just like a little change purse or whatever is again, we're going to print, your your detail shop's logo on it. You're going to mm -hmm. put all the loose change or sunglasses or yeah. pins and pencils in it for the customer mm -hmm. um, in a nice compact little thing. And they're going to, that's a cool little bag yeah. they can use for anything else also. Right. Yep. Um, it's a great idea. Yeah. So I really want to push the customization thing. Okay. Um, and for is there detailers. minimum order requirements on those or on yes. the bags? Yeah. So what we're, what we're doing now, it, just to make it easier, um, and we started to add some items, we're just going to make bundles. Okay. So, for example, with the bags, we have a 10-piece okay. bundle Got for it. like 50 bucks Got or something. It. And that includes the price of the printing. Got the way it. we used to sell it was you would you know buy the towels and then you know pay for the printing separate. But in order to make the ordering process smoother, uh, smoother for us and for customers mm -hmm. to see what they're getting. Got it. Um, is to uh, just do it, sell them in bundles. Okay. So they'll most likely just be like in 10 piece or okay. 20 piece bundles or okay. something. Um, but it's a great, it's a great item to have just on hand at your shop. Even the bigger bags, the, the little, I wanted to call it like a dime sack, but the littler, <laughs> <laughs> the littler bags are perfect for loose change and stuff. The bigger bags are good to have on hand too for bigger items or clothing that they may have. Yeah, the clients may have scattered around the car, and instead of putting it in a lawn leaf bag or a grocery bag or something like that, why not give them yeah. a branded thing that you can kind of nicely place on their seat? Yeah, and again, it gives that that professional look when they they're checking out their car, scoping their car for pickup, and then they have all their stuff nicely needed in a bag. I mean, the the presentation Absolutely. factor of it is just you know huge yeah it is huge to have i mean i remember when i got i was even just impressed and this was probably like 10 years ago once when i got my car detailed and the detailer had taken like a water bottle mm -hmm. and put his logo yeah. on the water yeah, bottle yeah. and then he had a separate baggy yeah right plastic bag that he had put all my change in and i was like oh that was nice of him yeah. to like organize it all mm -hmm. for me yeah but now you take it to the next level yep where you have you know your branding on the bag yep. and then it's a bag that they're going to keep and they're probably yep. going to keep it in their car yep um, yep and people uh, detailers try water air fresheners the the floor mat protector things that we've constantly looked for different ways to brand our businesses throughout the car but all those things are throwaway items. Yeah. You know, this is the first like non throwaway thing that I think is very, and yeah, it's going to cost you a few bucks to have it. But again, it's like the tell of the month club. It's yeah. costing you a few bucks. And on the onset, it looks like it's costing you money, but to keep your brand in front of that customer, if you, if you had to keep your name and your brand in front of that customer in other ways, Facebook ads or whatever, yeah. how much would that cost you? Exactly. Right. You know? And not hating on Facebook ads because those things can be great yep. for keeping your brand in front of people. But the physical world yeah. is there all the time. Yep. Yep. I mean, even though some of us are probably on our phones like 10 hours a day. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the new. Yeah, we can track it now. Yeah, dude. we can track it now. Every week when yep. I see that thing, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm a horrible person. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. My <laughs> wife was giving me so much crap because she thought I was on my phone like all the time. Right. Yeah. And so then that feature came out, right? And I'm like, I bet you you're on your phone more than I am. Oh and she's like, there's no freaking way. There's no way. I'm yeah. like, freaking pull it up, right? Yeah. And she was on her phone like 20% more than I was. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> Won that battle. <laughs> I rationalize it by the fact that I 
have to use my phone and everyone does right everyone we're all does. using it for work for work but man how hard is it to manage all the stuff like getting mm-hmm. messages through facebook it's a lot instagram mm-hmm. messenger email mm-hmm. all these things yeah. like you really have to start putting up boundaries and walls and and yeah. kind of i mean i've had to do that of like look i gotta cut this off because it's never ending right never ending. And, and and it really just sucks the life from you <laughs> and then spit you out yeah you know so yeah, you got to be careful sometimes, but it but it's a balance too because it's customer support and customer service, and you are running a business that's twenty four seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gone are the days of clock in, clock out. You know, unless you have the benefit of being an employee, I guess. But yeah. but it's it's we're doing this on a Saturday. Yeah, at two thirty in the afternoon. You know, when we both could be home with family, it's constant. Yeah, well, you there's know? no way I could do this during the week, <laughs> right? So. Right. If I was here, like, during the week, there'd be too much commotion. Right. I, like, I would have already had to answer 30 questions right. from my employees, right? Right, right. Um, so I actually work from home a couple days a week so that I'm not here. Got it. So that I can actually get work done. And you have your innovation lab yeah. upstairs, Yeah, right? I've got an upstairs, <laughs> which is a complete mess right now. <laughs> I'm like a – I don't know. I've just got – pieces of microfiber that i've cut up and chopped people up people would of- kill to be here it's <laughs> insane like i know that there's so many detailers out there that geek out on microfiber that would just like they would live here oh yeah it's it's amazing um it's amazing how much people love microfiber i think you know part of it is just the feel of it mm-hmm. um, and it's it's interesting because that has it's changed 10 years ago people hated the way microfiber felt Mm. so like the grippiness on your hands Mm -hmm. and the way it would touch like if you had like if your hands if you had man hands right 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 right, right. and you would right really grabby oh man right but it's almost nails on a chalkboard yeah yeah but now um i almost never get that complaint anymore Mm. even though the towels still have that (laughs) quality Mm -hmm. right people have adjusted their Mm. mindset to it interesting um but yeah man it's amazing the passion that people have mm-hmm. for towels mm-hmm. um, and microfiber specifically. And I think that's another reason why the Towel of the Month Club mm-hmm. is going to be a success. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super happy about that. Um, lots of times when you come up with an idea and you do something, it's a total flop. Mm. But the feedback I've gotten from customers over this is like, great idea, amazing, yeah, I can't I, believe it. How come no one's ever done it before? I know. Right. And those are the best ideas. Like, why why wasn't this done? Like, yeah. this is so simple and so, well, maybe not simple, but the thought, the idea is simple. The idea is simple. You know, right? why has it not been done before? But I think I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I yeah. could get towels whenever I want, but I still, I got mine yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, oh sweet yeah and the thing um the more i've thought about it i think it's kind of cool just to get that one targeted thing Mm -hmm. like so example if i tried to do like uh you know a monthly box or whatever and Mm. throw five or six towels Mm -hmm. in it it wouldn't have the same impact Mm. right so i feel like if you just get that one towel that Mm -hmm. one sample yep and you're expecting it and then you get to use it and think about it for the whole month and maybe i send a follow-up email Mm -hmm. and you're just i actually started to get jealous because i saw a couple other people post about their towel yeah and i was like where's my towel (laughs) like what the heck what's going (laughs) <laughs> so it's almost like a little FOMO thing going on yeah. too, you know, like I want my towel, Exactly. you know, yeah. I want to see it. And I do, you're right. I do like, I take it out of the packaging. I read the literature on it. I look at it. I feel it like I do spend, I mean, yeah. albeit maybe a couple minutes, a minute or two, but I, for that minute or two, like I am kind of dissecting the towel. Yeah. Yeah. And there's you know? that focus to it. So like, for example, if you get, if you buy a bunch of products from us, you know, eight different items sure. you're not going to spend all that right, time right. And you're not going to have that focused right. thought on it yeah um so uh, there's just a lot of reasons why i think it's going to be a success mm-hmm. and it's one of those things where it's good for both parties yeah right so 100 percent. right when you can create a win-win situation for everybody yep. um i mean because uh, uh, lots of people think that they're just like there's, I bet you there's a bunch of people just giggling every month. Ha ha, I got this towel for a dollar. It, cost, <laughs> it probably cost them $2 right, to make the right. towel, right? It's probably Which true. Is, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what else do you have on your list over there? That uh, we need to yeah, cover? so our my other main thing mm-hmm. here um, uh, for uh, not just innovating products and where auto fiber has really fallen behind and needs to get a lot better mm-hmm. is content creation. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, product education, mm-hmm. educating customers on our products, and the towel of the month fits in with that. Um, so I've started um, to really make a big effort. Uh, I created uh, Microfiber University, mm. which is up on Auto Fiber, um, which is uh, pretty much going to be like uh, all the technical information mm. about microfiber, the difference between. And there's a surprising of number of people that really care about the little tiny details of each Thing, yeah you know well i think it's important the more you know the better decisions you mm. can make um so uh, j- just from a business perspective like talking about um on our phones mm-hmm. all this answering the same questions mm. over and over and over again like i want people to be able to reach out yeah, to me yeah. and ask questions um uh, like through messenger or messaging for a long time i resisted that because it is such a time sink yeah. right but like sometimes every once in a while you get that really good idea from a problem mm-hmm. that somebody has so i want people to be able to reach out to me mm-hmm. but when i'm answering the same questions over and over and over again i need to write articles right like so now because then you could just send a link now i can it's send actually a what link. i do for videos sometimes it's like here it's just easier to watch this video like exactly. what kind of pressure washer do you have it's like frig Here's yeah. the link to the video. So it's almost like a frequently asked questions, yep. you know, set up. Mm-hmm. But also from a marketing standpoint, from a SEO standpoint. Mm-hmm. And I actually sure. really think that detailers should be adding a lot more content. Hundred percent. You know, and explaining yep. why, you mm-hmm. know, it's not a ten dollars to wash yep. your car. Yep. We talk about education, yeah. Like we need to educate our customers, but then it drops off at creating a video or a blog post or or anything about it. Well, it's not you know? easy. Any people that are out there creating content, creating videos, creating articles, information, it's hard. it is not easy. Mm-mm. Like I mean, I think of myself as fairly articulate. I've mm-hmm. got a good education, but me sitting down to write these things, it's like pulling out my teeth mm-hmm. and i'm i mean i'm actually i'm a fairly good writer but it's mm. uh i hate writing yeah Writing's i hate it too worst. it's like oh man it's like yep. giving birth or something <laughs> like i feel like it's painful yeah it's painful yeah. right but the same thing about videos right videos is even videos worse. Is even harder <laughs> that's why i started with audio it's a lot easier to just pick up your phone and talk yeah you know but it's still not easy it's still right? not easy yeah we sat here for hours yep. talking about other stuff before yep. we got onto yep. it. Sometimes you just have to jump off the cliff yep. and into yep. the thing yep. and make a lot of mistakes. But sure. I do think um, a lot of detailers miss the ball on marketing mm-hmm. in terms of content creation. 100%. And even just looking at um, – I like to look at lots of different detailers, mm-hmm. websites and stuff, mm-hmm. and I think they need help <laughs> in terms of like yeah. what, like how many times have I looked at a detailer's website and they don't have their address yeah. on their website mm-hmm. or they don't have, there's a lot of controversy over pricing, mm-hmm. whether they should have pricing or not. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to make your own decision on sure. that. Um, but then a lot of guys also don't have reviews from their customers, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's social proof. How about like a book? Na- I, so I created a course one time and it was like the number one mistake 99% of the detailers make on their website is they don't have a book now button. Yeah. Like a call to action. A call to action. Yeah. Like ask for the sale, like book your appointment now. If a customer landed on your website, they're probably ready to go. Yeah. But the problem is, is like when you are a fish doesn't know the water it's swimming in. Yeah. Right. So like, right. That's the hard part is to take, a bigger perspective and to look at, at something like a customer's going to look at it. Cause right? we just look at other detailers. It's exactly. A big problem. Yeah. You're looking at other detailers yep. or you're looking at it from the perspective of a detailer yep. where you're not telling that story yep. to the customer from yep. what the customer's looking for. Yep. So like if, I, if I'm a customer looking for 
a detailer, the first thing I'm looking at is where are they located, right? right? So if you don't have your address yep. on right. there, and I feel like your address should be on every page. Mm-hmm. You should have a map on every page mm-hmm. of your freaking website. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lots of guys just have, you know, a list of services and a bunch of pictures of shiny cars right. or whatever. Right. Where, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I feel like, and barely anyone has testimonials mm-hmm. or custom reviews. Right. Yep. Imagine if you had like videos, a yeah. couple interviews with customers. Yeah. But it's go. awkward and hard and yeah. but that's also the reason it's it being hard is also the reason why you should do it cuz most detailers aren't going to do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, to set yourself apart. To set yourself yeah. apart. Yeah, and we gripe and and moan and complain about you know, oh, the car wash down the street or this guy is undercutting me or that guy's undercutting me. And it's like everyone has – there's plenty of cars everywhere. Everyone has their own market. It's just maybe that's not your customer or you haven't figured out who your customer is. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's an, it's an amazing industry, even just the way it's changed in the last five years, the t- high-end part of the industry. Yep. Um, yep. The codings have definitely ushered that in. It's amazing, like with paint corrections. And I think customers are, I don't know, I feel like people, uh, the high end part of the automotive industry is Mm -hmm. just way more developed, Mm -hmm. like the aftermarket part. People, the way I look at detailers, and people might get offended by this, but I feel like they're like, the male version of a makeup artist, yeah. right? Or yeah. like a hairstylist, 100%. right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're selling vanity to 100 percent, right? which is why it sometimes gets like it's on the it's the low man on the totem pole. Yeah, because it really is a a uh, luxury thing. Yeah, just by nature. Yeah, you know. But the cool thing about the industry and why there's always new people coming in. So like as a product supplier, yeah. there's it's a the barrier to entry to becoming a detailer is like very low yep. low i mean almost lower than yeah, any other industry ever. there is yeah. right so like 16 year old kid yep. who's got nothing who yep. maybe he's been in juvenile hall for his whole life yep. can come out and start a business yep. right and he can build himself up into this yep. like detailer yep. that is you know, doing $5,000 coatings yep. and corrections. Yep. Like some of my customers, it's amazing the growth they've had in the last mm-hmm. five years, right? Yep. From just mobile guys to now mm-hmm. like 10,000 square foot shops, multi- multiple shops. Yep. Like it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, and so the question becomes like, as the technology takes over and as people like self-driving cars, mm-hmm. like how's the industry going to change? You drive it right over to my shop. That's why you got to have your address on your website. Yeah, so you exactly. know where to send your Tesla. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> you can send the Tesla yeah, over I'll there. I'll be at work. Yeah. Send it over. <laughs> yeah. It's going to change because shops don't need rental cars. You know, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. But I feel like um, the high end part of the market yeah. is going to become even better bigger Mm -hmm. right because yeah if people start driving less yep and there's all these self-driving cars like people are going to be searching for the you know driving spot yeah people are going to i think people are going to go on more you know for sure cruises you know with their friends Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um just to drive yep um and people are going to you know be more into taking care of their you know their car which isn't their daily driver right 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 so i feel like the high-end part of the market and then also like just imagine like ride sharing services they're gonna all you still have to clean the cars mm-hmm. and cars aren't going anywhere no man. cars are not even with the green new deal the new no new deal. <laughs> there's gonna be more cars right you know? yeah definitely hmm so if people want to get these bags, they want to join the towel of the month, they want to see what Autofiber is up to, how can they follow along? How can they, obviously, autofiber.com, and I talk yeah. about it all the time, but, you know, plug social media and how they can message you and bug you at all hours of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So just, I mean, check out autofiber.com. We've got a mailing list. If you sign up for the towel of the month club, you know, we're going to be emailing you updates on the products. We've got Instagram and Facebook. Um, 
so yeah just keep an eye out and you know we're adding a lot more information um content i really um you know the, the way i want to do my content is i kind of want to source the content mm -hmm. from people in the industry so i want to work with guys like jimbo um i'm working with billy at american detail or mm -hmm. garage people who have a lot more experience than me mm -hmm. in detailing um working with detailed review um, to hopefully make some videos mm -hmm. um and i want to start you know even just working with customers mm -hmm. you know to help with customer I, reviews i was gonna say a, a perfect opportunity for detailers talking to if they're if they're thinking of a way to create more content join the towel of the month yeah and get the towel and do a video on it to create content around yeah. it maybe check out the microfiber university to figure out what is you know um a little uh nugget from there that they can use to talk about the towel or whatever yeah. and explain they can use it to just explain to their customers why they use this specific towel on the windows or to you know to not scratch their paint yes. or whatever so well absolutely okay so that actually ties into another big push that i want to make um with auto fiber and the industry um is i I feel like there's another profit center mm -hmm. for detailers, you know, selling 100%. supplies yep. to their customers, yep. you know, especially with the ceramic coating yep. um, guys, you know, mm -hmm. uh, lots of people will get a ceramic coating and they're going to want to do the maintenance themselves, yep. right? So right. you get your car all nice and... Or the detailer wants the customer to do the maintenance themselves because yeah. they can't handle the work. Exactly. There's a mm -hmm. too much work. Right. So, uh, you know... The idea with Auto Fiber, we've got these. Um, you can sign up for a wholesale account mm. um, where you can get a good discount on the product um, and still buy the retail. You know, get the retail packaging that's mm -hmm. going to look nice, and you can sell the products to your customers. Awesome. Right. So perfect for guys that have shops or even mobile guys that want to create these like maintenance kits, like exactly, you talked about. Right. Get the branded bag for their brand. Yep. Stuff it with towels and create a yes thirty dollar fifty dollar hundred dollar maintenance kit that you can sell that they're doubling their the detailers doubling their money on absolutely and increasing the bottom line on a coating yeah and it's not only that you you know with the kit you can help educate your customer yep on proper wash yeah. whatever and so yeah i'm working with billy on coming up with um not just auto fiber products, mm -hmm. but different variations of his American detail or garage products um, like Wipeout and Valor so that we can sell them um, as a kit mm -hmm. to the detailers so that they can, you know, sell um, the products to their customers and add a profit mm -hmm. center to their business. So how um, do they join that? Um, so if you just go, we've got a just a link at the top of auto fiber okay. that's wholesale, right? So we've got a couple of different programs mm -hmm. um, where you just join and- Detailers uh, are always looking for additional profit centers. So, and and it's a way for them to save on, if you're already buying towels, yeah. you might as well become a distributor, buy a little extra. Yes. Yeah, so when you, um, we've got a couple different versions of the account. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's not only the wholesale accounts aren't just for you to buy the products to sell to your customers, but, um, we we're selling full cases of the products yep. for your business. Right. Yep. So, um, you know, some customers are just going to want to buy, you know, the bulk products to mm -hmm. use in their business. Yep. Um, but I can tell you just from talking to so many detailers out there that there are a lot of guys, especially the high end detailers who are building out packages mm -hmm. and selling products to their mm -hmm. customers. Um, and, you know, that's a new thing that's happening. I think that not only from a profit, you know, and revenue standpoint, mm -hmm. but also, you know, from an educating your customer and um, just building that goodwill with your customer mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I, the with my business and it's taken a long time to figure this out is dollars isn't the only currency right. in your business mm -hmm. like goodwill mm -hmm. and your image and yep. you know just giving people a good feeling mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to d 
detailing, which is such like a feeling based, vanity based yep. business, right? Yep. Like, like it makes people feel good. Mm-hmm. You feel good when your car is clean. You do. It runs better. You feel better. You yeah. And yeah. when it's shiny, you yep. know, and it, the towels are kind of similar too, mm-hmm. right? Like soft towels, yep. the way they feel mm-hmm. like, so if you're leaving that with your customer and the branding, yep. um, creating the whole experience it's an experience Mm -hmm. right so and there's that storytelling factor right and you can create a whole story around your brand yep with content yep Um, it's the whole package it's the whole and that's how you differentiate yourself from other people yeah you know but it's hard it's hard and but that's how you differentiate that's how you differentiate 100 percent. you know if it was you know everyone's already done all the easy stuff Everyone's doing the easy stuff. Yep. So you set yourself apart yep. by doing the hard things. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. That's awesome. Is yeah. there any anything else we forgot? You know, not that I think, not that I can think of. Um, just keep an eye out for more cool, innovative auto fiber. I love products. that. And, and the best way to do that is to to join the towel of the month because you're going to get the email updates yep. and you're going to get yeah. you're going to be keep yourself in the loop. Maybe. Exactly. Yes. And that is another reason for the towel of the month is we've got kind of quote unquote some gimmicky products mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, the flip towels that flip inside out. They're pre folded and so I wouldn't call those gimmicks. Yeah, but I like them. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it, too. So is a gimmick, you know, something that's. I guess I looked at it as a negative connotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's well, not really, necessary. And that's why people couldn't see my air quotes when God. I said gimmick, <laughs> right? But it kind of is a gimmick, but it's also a gimmick that solves a problem. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. And I don't expect it to work for everybody. Um, What's, so I'll touch on this real quick because I like the I like the glass flip towels yeah. a lot, right? Yeah. And then I'm part of the bulk program or distributor or whatever, right? Yeah. And I accidentally bought the wrong window towel mm-hmm. one time. I bought – it's the same material. It's just not sewn together as a flip, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? Like this is how I normally use towels. Like maybe I'll like it better than the flip and the flip yeah. will just be a fluke. I actually prefer the flip. Yeah. Towel because you could get, especially for windows, you can get that fresh side of the towel. Yep. And when you have a normal towel that you just fold, yeah. right, it doesn't seem like a big deal. It seems like we're splitting hairs. But like a normal 16 by 16 towel that you fold four ways or eight ways or whatever, yeah. it still leaks through. Unlike the flip doesn't seem to leak through yeah. to other sides of the towel, I guess. No, I it does because it's multiple layers right. built upon each other. Right. Uh, yeah, and then it kind of helps with the fact that lots of times when you have those towels folded, um, the towel like crumples under exactly. itself as you're right. wiping. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that I mean, with the towel of the month, I feel like we can convince a good portion of customers yeah. that the flip towel isn't yeah. just a gimmick. Right. That it actually right. has a problem solving. Yeah. I love you know, that. I part love those to towels. It, right. Yep. Um, because it really does. That comes from a, other conversations mm-hmm. with customers complaining about, oh, I like that towel, but there's too much friction and it just folds under your hands. Or, oh. you know, um, you know, lots of guys like to use towels for rinseless wash. Right. But, you know, all the time it takes to unfold and refold to mm-hmm. new sections. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had customers for rinseless that were asking for like little smaller towels. Mm. Um, but then if you're always going back into the bucket. Right over and over again um Hmm. so yeah so hopefully i get some samples of those towels into customers hands and find um the value in it or maybe some detailers will see them and they'll be be like yeah i completely understand Mm -hmm. like if we print our logo on this towel and leave it with a customer this is way better than a business card yep right yep um way better so i mean there's a lot of these things that are solving multiple problems Mm -hmm. um and i want to attack it from all these levels yep um and one of them is to leverage you know detailers Mm -hmm. you know to help them sell products but also that'll help get my brand out there also of course Um, so anytime we can create you know everyone winning at once that's the long-term goal I like it. Well, cool. sounds like everyone needs to go to idlefiber.com. Yeah, do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ian. Thanks.